our young people back into work. Alfred Naro. Mr Chair, thank you, and I uh, am honoured to take a call uh, on this bill. Mr Chair, just the, the, uh, the previous member that was speaking, I want to uh, highlight a few points. What concerns me, Mr Chair, is he used the word hope. And uh, it's obviously that uh, when he used the word hope, and he talked about the fact that the concern of the benchmark of NCA Level 2, what concerns me, Mr Chair, is that as a father of four children, as a Board of Trustees for over 20 years, I've seen the factors is that when you do not set an aspiration and a benchmark of achievement for young people, that's what concerns me about that Member of Parliament there, Mr Speaker. Because what he's actually saying to mums and dads in New Zealand is that don't set your sights too high. These are disengaged youth and what you would call in the too hard to deal with basket. So this is what, you, this is what they say. Let's just make it really simple. Let's not make it too hard. Well, let me just tell that, that member, that honourable member over there, maybe because he hasn't actually worked with disengaged youth. So let me tell a little story about how I worked with some disengaged youth. A disengaged youth who didn't have NCA Level 1, neither NCA Level 2, neither, neither NCA Level 3. He was on a track of going into crime and into incarceration. His parents had given up on him, his community had given up on him. This is what we did with this young man. We gave him a sense, we set a benchmark of what he could achieve. I'm happy to say that that young man now, through the support that we've given him, is now qualified as a carpenter. He's now working as a lecturer in carpentry. And in two years, his department has said that he could be the head of department. Why, Mr. Chair? Because we did not dumb his expectations down. And instead we came along, and that's what this bill is about. This is not about theory, Mr. Prasad. This is about reality. This is the reality that we're talking about. So on the 25th, 25th of June this year, I was at Robinson Road School. And it, it, was the, it, was the, it was the week of Leadership Week. And at Robinson Road School, I met with year seven and year eight young people that were there. The young man that met me at the, uh, at the school office, his name was called APEC. That's right. Him and I laughed a little bit. I said, did your parents name him after the Asia Pacific Corporation? He said, yes, he did. And he laughed. Then I said to him, young APEC, what's your dream? And he said this. He said, Mr. Ngaro, my dream is that one day that I could become an accountant. I went into that year seven and year eight, and we talked about daring to dream and aspirations. You see, Mr. Robinson, that's what this bill is about. Aspirations with reality. It's also about this. It's about being responsible. This package of reforms balances obligations and support with new initiatives and a focus. Mr. Robinson, what this is also about is transformation. The word transformation means dramatic change. And this is the thing, is that what this government is committed to is dramatic change. Why? Because the things that we've always done have not always supported and helped our people. So this is what we're doing. We've got a youth package to help disengage you people, young people into education, training and employment. Just a few of them, not all of them. And you know, we've talked about wraparound too as well, Mr Robinson, obviously you haven't been involved in wraparound services. So let, just, let me just give you a few uh, instances of wraparound services, okay? A few instances around wraparound services. It's not just a big hug, like, a, like, a, like that pink bat ad, okay? It's actually a reality of, of tough love and actually support services. That's what this is about, okay? And this is, again, what are we, who are we talking about? We're talking about disengaged youth who need support, who need help. So this is what we're saying to them. No, we're not going to leave you alone. So we're going to help you with support on budgeting. We're going to help you with support on parenting. We're going to help you with support on childcare. That's what we're doing. That's what you call wraparound services. You see, we've learned from the 80s when the Labour government tried it, but it fell over. You only need to ask the organisations of South Auckland in the 80s, and it all fell over. Why? Because it was all cotton wool. It was all fluffy. And this is what they've done. We've taken the learnings from that, and we've made sure that we've got the support to have wraparound services that focus on that. What about a stronger work focus? That's what we're doing. This bill aims to change work availability and preparation requirements. Mr Chairman, this bill is also about saying to young people that it's not just about saying that, yes, 
Um, we've heard the, the cries and the gnashing of teeth about the fact that said, these poor young women that were on the DPB, what we're doing, we're oppressing them from having the young families. Absolutely not. What we're saying to them is this, is that that does not have to disengage you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, are you seeing another call? Mr. Chair. Alfred Nairo. <laughs> Mr. Chair, this is about a stronger work focus. That's what this bill aims to do. It's about changing attitudes. And the honourable member over there, Mr. Seor, talked about how that he thought he heard, and he was wrong, because it's in the Hansards, that the minister say that Māori and Pacific young people, OK, have this impression and this perception that they will be on the benefit. Absolutely not. And we know that that's not the intent of the heart of the minister and also the intent of this party and of this government. In fact, what it is, Mr. Seor, is about saying this, lift your aspirations, look for opportunities. So let's give you another example, because we're not talking about theory. Let's talk about Benaya Kalani, Point England Primary School over in Glen Innes. The young people there around e-learning, and this is what they did. This is what they did. They turned around and said, we want to contribute. We want to focus that we too can contribute just like our parents are. $3.85 a week is what their parents contribute to helping to pay for their notebooks. These young people said, we can do the same too. So what did they do? They designed the fact a program about how they could be employed by the school to be able to contribute to this. So what did they do? They saw there were a lot of visitors coming to the school looking at the e-learning programs. So they said, what if we made coffee and tea? They bought a coffee machine. They got trained as baristas. And this is the wonderful thing. Children as young as seven and eight are also changing the attitude. Why? Because it's about an attitude of work focus. It's an attitude opportunity. Work is the means to an end that our young people are looking for. This is what we're talking about, Mr. Chair. These are the opportunities that, that we are doing as well, okay? And it's about addressing the concerns raised. What about the Privacy, the Privacy Act and about the sharing of information? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, this is absolutely important. This is not about breaching privacy. This is actually about ensuring that the right information follows through with the young person so that they can be supported. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, this is a great bill. Mr. Chair, I stand here proudly as one who's worked in the services, social services, worked in NGOs, worked in community-led development. This is a community-led development approach. Why? Because it puts the resources and the opportunities in the hands of the community to innovate a new response, to be able to develop programs, initiatives. Yes, like the Otoronga Youth Policy. You see, the problem, the, the issue was this. It's not about redeveloping that program or about youth transition services, but good, good practitioners know this. It's about the use of the practitioner and the skills that they have to truly make the difference. Mr. Chairman, this is a great bill. It's making a difference in the lives of many of our young people and our families. I support this bill. Thank you.